Hi, hello, my name is Ollie and this is Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy making um, images about queer fiction and talking about books. Um, because today I am talking about books a bit more generally, because I am doing my wrap up. Um, so I did my first haul last month and now I'm actually uh, doing <laughs> the wrap up stage, which I, uh, I, I got a bit of like advice on a wrap up because I haven't read all the books which I hauled and I was like, is that okay? Can I just talk about the, some of the books that I read? I have been reassured that it's okay not to have read all the books that you initially hauled. I do have every good intention of reading those books. But these are ones that I actually have managed to uh, read so far. Anyway, getting into it. Um, Sebastian Barry, Days Without End. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was so beautiful. I thought everything about this book really delivered. Like, I can totally understand why it won the Costa Award. So the book talks very lightly about Thomas um, McNulty and John um, Cole's relationship with each other. It's not actually like the focus in terms of the relationship between those two individual guys. Um, it's more about what is happening to them and the situations that they're facing as they're going through the Civil War and the impact of that both on their lives and what's surrounding them. Um, and it's a bit of an epic, like it was a slow burn read and um, when I first began reading it I was like... Yeah, nothing's too much happening with this. But then as it got further into it, it suddenly just like plummeted really steeply into a load of action and then like it broke off again and it goes really really hard again. But what I really enjoyed is that it has this really strong relationship between nature and man and uh, talking about the kind of destructive element of man in terms of the civil wars, the way they're raging against each other. He doesn't even really know or understand what's exactly going on. He's just been kind of thrown into it. And then there's these surprising things which happen with nature with, which he has no control over and it kind of flares up and um, but it goes through kind of each of the elemental stages so in terms of you have um, a big uh, flood that happens in there, they, um, there's snow and surrounding desert, starving or um, they're um, in this really chaotic angry mess of just colliding with each other in terms of colliding cultures um, but there's also these really beautiful passages which describes his love for Winona, his um, kind of adopted daughter, um, and all the action that happens around there. And you are constantly threatened by the idea that he is going to lose either Winona or John Cole. I just can't go any further because I'll spoil whether or not they live. It's a lot to take on as you're reading through it, and I felt a lot of things throughout this book. Any kind of criticism of it is that um, the sex scenes between um, uh, John and Thomas, they're like non-existent. I, I, it's just totally not about any of the sex and uh, I know that uh, Sebastian Barry wrote this with his son in mind and it's almost like he knew that he didn't really want to go there because it's almost like by him acknowledging that <laughs> his son has sex or talking about sex he knows he'd almost be having a conversation with his son about sex. That's kind of how it felt because he literally said <laughs> I think that's literally the line that it, he, he does to describe it. Anyway, I massively enjoyed it. The next one was What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. I enjoyed this book. I thought the kind of biggest theme around this was about possession. This professor has gone over to Sophia and um, he uh, is trying to kind of start up his new life over there. He goes into this public bathroom and basically ha has a pickup shag with this um, prostitute called Miko. Um, and it's all about their relationship and bond between each other. What I liked about this book is the way it meanders in a way. Uh, you have this very intense rush at the start um, in terms of his deep crush and the, the relationship that he forms is quite kind of frenzied and frantic and it, he's very honest and open about his thoughts and feelings for him and it's um, kind of primal <laughs> and very driven in terms of uh, his sexual lust and desire. Um, but then once that kind of initial excitement has gone it, it kind of parts away from that um, and you're kind of taken along a different journey and in the middle section I was kind of taken away from the, the main drive and I was like but why are we learning about your relationship with your mum and dad? but it does then bring it back and the, it brings it back in a way which does make sense to the book because it is only a, a short read but it did feel almost like 
had somehow gone down the wrong track for a little bit. I'd say the ending of this book is quite traumatic <laughs> in some ways. And it's interesting in terms of what it means to belong to another person. And it's, it's very much about the ownership that one person has over the other and the tension between the two main characters. Um, you, you feel as though the ownership and control between them is almost dishonest and um, the reasons why they're actually together is quite quite messy and bleak in a lot of ways but it is it, it does attempt to be quite open about those feelings and about the reasons why they're actually together but it is taken from the perspective of, of the American teacher over the prostitute um, and so you are only seeing the one side of view and never know what um, the characters have actually been experiencing or uh, feeling and that can be quite frustrating um, but I guess that's the kind of sense of a, a natural relationship with uh, with another person. You don't know what they're thinking, you don't know what they're feeling, but you feel all his anxiety in this book. The next one is Release, where I went to the book uh, reading with uh, Patrick Ness and um, Simon Savage. It was a really uh, interesting night. I was actually a little bit disappointed though when I read this. I'm really sorry, like I really enjoy Patrick Ness, but um, the, the, this whole thing with the ghost, it just did not do it for me. <laughs> like, I really like the concept of it, uh, borrowing from the structure of the hours, but I felt like that structure would have worked perfectly if it had just been by itself. The, the adding in of this ghost story really detracted from the pace of the story for me personally. I get that this is a YA novel. I think a younger person who's into that kind of fantasy would probably appreciate it a bit more, but it just felt so disjointed and it almost felt like they were two different stories and they would have worked individually really well. I was really enjoying just what was happening in Adam's day. It is set over the one day. That was enough for me. I didn't need anything else um, in, in, with regards to the ghost story element. Um, and every time I was pulled away from what was happening f from Adam and focusing on what was happening with this, this dead ghost uh, woman, I was just like... I was hoping that they would tie up together really well and for me it, they, it just wasn't a profound enough reason for them to mesh together. It just didn't, like, for me, it, it, it just wasn't satisfying in that, like, in terms of the release. The release wasn't great for me, guys. Like, it just wasn't great. <laughs> the next one I read wasn't in my haul at all. I just read it because I had it on my shelf ages ago and I never actually got around to reading it. But this was another event which I ended up going over to, um, which Simon Savage was hosting, which was um, Juno Dawson doing gender games and that was freaking amazing. So i would read this in preparation of going over and um, seeing that event. Her talk was brilliant um, but this book is gay, um, was a fantastic read. Highly recommend this to anyone who wants to educate themselves in general about um, sex and gender. Uh, it's just a really good comprehensive read um, that goes through all the ins and outs and wibbles and wobbles that you might experience and, and all the kind of questions that you may have um, and it handles them in a really frank and open and honest way. About like you were being guided through by a trusted friend in terms of everything you actually ever wanted to learn about sex. So I'm massively looking forward to reading um, Gender Games next, that's on my next TBR, um, but I was really pleased to have read this book in the interim. The last one that I read is Catcher in the Rye, which I've just literally finished. The reason why I think I like this book is because it reminded me of Adrian Mole. Poor, poor Holden Caulfield, he, he's just a misunderstood put upon guy. I mean, yes, okay, he's just a, a rich son of who's <laughs> basically blaming the world and he's whining um, but and he's really angsty and that can be a little irritating but I can just there's so many people who experience that especially at that kind of at that age and he tells you exactly what he's thinking and feeling and what I really liked is that it isn't just a, a, a book which is taking you from point A to point B he's taking you on his journey and he's pointing out all the things in his world and all his thoughts that are going on as he's getting there and it's just about kind of like hanging out with Caulfield. I just enjoyed the experience even though he is a little whiny, I, I like the idea of him being a little bit OCD. Um, I also like the way that he misinterprets um, his interactions with women and he's quite naive and 
vulnerable in a lot of ways. Um, and I like the fact they can't fully articulate himself. He describes himself as uh, the things that he goes through are all quite de depressing, but he doesn't go any further than that. He, do he's, he doesn't yet have the um, skills to articulate what he's actually thinking and feeling, but the way he enables himself to leak what he's thinking and feeling through the things that he's saying and through the amount of information that he's introducing, that's what I really liked. I really liked the voice, I really liked the style of it. I don't think it's the best thing in the world. I think there are other novels which have done better character studies than this, but I think this is pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. I'm glad that I've read it. I've, I'm glad that I've given it time. I'm glad it's only this short. It wasn't what I expected it to, to be about uh, at all. It might be that I'm more nostalgic with this book because I'm not that age group anymore and I, I'm, I'm not looking at the world in the same lens and like I feel like I've probably lived a few things and through a few things and so I mean this for me was still a good read. I enjoyed it. I had fun. <laughs> I had fun with this one. Anyway, that's my wrap up. Those are the books that I have been reading. I hope that if you enjoyed my wrap up and click like or subscribe, the little bell button there, you can click on that as well and then you'll be able to be notified exactly when I'm doing my next video. Okay, I'll see you again soon. Bye!